Once we've got an understanding for how we make the calculation for these directional derivatives, from there the computation itself is really not all that bad. It's just a matter of finding a few partial derivatives and forming a dot product. So here we're going to take the derivative of our function. We're going to do it at the point 3, 0 and in the direction of this vector v. And one thing to keep in mind is this vector that we work with here must be a unit vector. So we'll have to adjust that vector when we use it in the dot product. Now the magnitude of v here is equal to the square root of 5. So that means we can adjust this and make v equal to the vector 2 over root 5 and negative 1 over root 5. And then our directional derivative, derivative of f of xy with respect to the vector v, or in the direction rather of the vector v, is going to be equal to the dot product of the vector we get when we take the partial of f with respect to x and the partial of f with respect to y and dot that with our vector v. So 2 over square root 5 and negative 1 over square root 5. So that's the dot product we want to form. Now, in this case I've used a little bit different notation than most books. A lot of times they'll use a u here instead of a v. And this is primarily because the vector that we're presented with here is not given as a unit vector. And this is typically the case when you're dealing with um, problems in a book or something like that. We really are asked to then um, go through the process of making v into a unit vector. So to avoid any confusion, I just used a different notation as opposed to a lot of books. Either way, we can go ahead and finish this problem out. We need to find two partials, so the partial of f with respect to x, and these come pretty quickly, our partial of f with respect to y, so that we can complete this vector here. So the partial of f with respect to x, again, going through term by term here, the first term, its partial with respect to x, is going to be 6x e to the y. The second term's partial with respect to x is going to be y squared, so minus y squared. Now we take the partial with respect to y of the first term, and this is going to be just e to the y times our 3x squared, minus the partial of the second term with respect to y, which is going to be minus 2xy. So there we have our partials that will drag down into our directional derivative formula. So here we're going to have 6x e to the y minus y squared and the partial with respect to y, 3x squared e to the y minus 2xy. And again, we're going to dot that with our directional vector, 2 over root 5 and negative 1 over root 5. Now in this case, we're doing this at a particular point. We know we wanted to do this at the point 3, 0. So we can actually plug in this point now as opposed to working with this from a functional standpoint to finish this out. So again, 3, 0. So we're going to take x equals 3, y equals 0, and substitute that in. And that'll give us our derivative for f of x in the direction of v at 3, 0. OK, so let's go ahead and run that through. e to the 0 is going to be 1. So this first term here is going to look like 6 times 3, which is 18, minus y squared. And again, y is 0, so that's just going to be 18. For the second piece, x is equal to 3. Again, e to the 0 is 1. So we get 3 squared, which is 9, times 3 again, which is 27, minus 0. So we don't need that piece. So there's our vector. And again, we're dotting that with 2 over root 5, comma negative 1 over root 5. At this point, it's a simple dot product. So we end up with 
36 over the square root of 5 minus 27 over the square root of 5. And that turns into 9 over the square root of 5. And for me, that's just fine. We can go ahead and leave it there. Maybe we want to round it off to a specific value if that's what we need to do.